so bear with me. Oh, I guess I'm just going to have to do it like this. Wait a minute. Where's that other door? That's okay. Well, um, welcome. Clearly, I'm I'm new to this, so um, at least for let's see how that works. The talking portion, you'll just have to look at this ugly logo, um, and I'll be in the corner here. Um, anyways, thanks for joining. Um, this is new to me. Um, uh, I am monitoring the chat, so let me know if you can't hear me or if you have any questions. Um, this is part of the course I'm teaching right now, which is on streaming media. Um, right now, because some of you are, are, are students in the course and some of you, I'm assuming, aren't. I'm just kind of tuning in. Um, but this is the, the, the final uh, session of the semester before we get into group presentations. And because we're ending on Twitch, I thought it only made sense to actually give it a shot. Um, yeah, I know it's kind of being too cute by half, right? Where it's like you're doing Twitch about Twitch, right? Um, but anyways, so today we're going to be discussing um, parts of a chapter from T.L. Taylor's Watch Me Play, courtesy of the library, um, Twitch and the Rise of Game Live Streaming. Um, I'm just going to do this just like the, the same way that, that I do, that I've done the video lectures up until now, where I'll just kind of go through the points. Um, and then, uh, I mean, this is the first and only synchronous class that we'll be doing this semester. So, um, uh, exactly. Yeah, that's why it's like, I'm, I usually wouldn't do something like this, but you know, even I couldn't kind of um, avoid it. It was too, it was, it was right there. So, um, okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. Um, gotta get my notes out. I'm just gonna say from the very beginning, I think that the reading sets us up um, in a direction where, and it's also because this is going to be the last time that, um, you have material from me talking about the 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 the, um, the course and and the concerns for at least um, this semester and streaming. It might be a little bit more pointed, um, and what I mean by that is that from the get go, so we read three sections, um, which I think are the kind of most important from this this chapter called Home Studios. But the first being um, viewer expectations and stereotypes. So it, it kind of starts us off in a way where, um, how do I put it? It's it's not innocuous, neutral, innocent stuff. And this is the sort of, um, at least again, last uh, instance where I'll be able to kind of sort of, I guess, have the floor uh, in, in a substantial way. So um, relatedly, I might be a little bit more emphatic than I generally am. And also I think that that kind of comes with the territory of what the platform is, because we've talked quite a bit about, um, sure. Does that help? Is that better? I can also fiddle over here a little bit. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. I actually feel like, wh why aren't I getting, okay, anyways. Um, okay, so um, there's going to kind of, there's some feedback. There's going to kind of be a, um, a gut check of sorts from, from the very beginning. Um, and so Taylor talks, so this is like 
you know, straight up from 105, she talks about in terms of the platform and Twitch. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, that people come onto this platform with, with expectations, right? Um, and this is why throughout the semester, I've kind of insisted that we think about what it means to have expectations in general, but you know, in terms of the expectations that we bring onto a streaming platform or a platform, something like this one, where, where it really comes down to just people, what she's bringing, you know, like, she's sort of emphasizing, you know, what does it mean to have expectations about other people? Right. And where do those expectations come from? Um, uh, uh, you know, they don't come from, 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 you know, out of nowhere, um, which, which, you know, again, like we talked about with the, the previous chapter we read in terms of politics and ideas, like ideas don't come from, from out of, out of nowhere. Um, I just can't, it's, it is like the, the platform is what it is. So you can't help, but like, and because it is the intention economy, it's like, you can't help, but keep looking at the numbers. And I saw like, I lost like nearly half, <laughs> which is kind of funny and great, but also cause it's like, Oh, we're talking about stereotypes and, 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 you know, you can't help, but kind of narrativize. Right. But, but who, who knows what it is anyways. And so this, I would take this, you know, every, every opportunity, right. Every, every opportunity, um, as a kind of um, uh, uh, a moment in which to kind of think about, you know, oneself. And so to ask like everyone, of course, ask and including myself, like, what are the expectations that, that we have, that you have, that I have about people, about one another, um, you know, why, and, and kind of more pointedly, why is it that we can't just encounter someone you know, whether it's online or offline and just allow that person to be whomever they are, we are already going into that transaction. And it is a transaction um, with, with you know, kind of baggage coming into it, regardless, in spite of sometimes even what the other person is, right? Um, and, and streamers are kind of caught up in this, as Taylor points out, in, in sort of complicated ways, right? Um, to that, Taylor sort of immediately talks about the fact that um, uh, according to those expectations and stereotypes that, that people aren't treated the same, right? Um, which says quite a bit about all of us because, you know, to be honest, I wonder who amongst us you know, is, 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 is you know, close to God in that sense that, that you are able to treat everyone exactly the same. Um, and so the question becomes like, you know, do, do you, do I, do we treat people, um, exactly the same with, with compassion and empathy and dignity and respect? Um, and if we don't, if that varies, if that differs, why, and according to what, you know, that, that's really what I think Taylor gets us to think about. Um, on 106, uh, she brings up a bunch of concerns, uh, for example, um, like this question of authenticity, right? That authenticity is something that's very much um, uh, on the uh, kind of like on the market these days. It's like it's for sale. Um, people are buying. What are you buying? Um, what are you selling? Um, uh, and so, I mean, in that sense, it's like the streamer has to kind of um, uh, uh, pedal in that right that that i mean even even like those of you who 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 know me um personally or or even in class i am performing a very different kind of um uh character even right now um uh and and there's a sense of like you know what what i mean this is my actual kitchen right um you know i don't have a studio yet um who knows um and in that sense, it's, you know, um, this idea that you're getting access to something that you, you generally don't because you're, you're in my home, right, in a, in a, in a way. Um, and so I, ca I try and capitalize on, or the streamer does, right, try and capitalize on the desire to see the authentic, which is, is why, the quote-unquote authentic, which is why, um, you know, uh, we're you know, the book is so much about like that kind of the, 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 the sort of relationship between the private and the public. Right. But 
there's the question that we've continuously brought up in terms of um, hegemony, right? Where it's like that authentic is is no more, let's say, no like in a philosophical sense, no truer nor less true than a stereotype. And like the relationship between those two can kind of become really, really tricky. And especially because this is ultimately, especially for the people that are doing this um, for a living, so kind of complicated, people might expect you to perform a certain way. And they might they might have an idea of what, what your quote unquote authentic self would be. And so streamers are caught in this double bind where they have to sort of indulge or kind of behave in a way that's expected of them, which can, you know, feed into those expectations and even uglier into stereotypes. So that's like a really, really kind of tricky sort of um, on 106 that she's talking about, like this, this, this negotiation and compromise even that we, and I think, and I would suggest, of course, that we all make on a daily basis, like what is expected of me? What do, what do people want from me? Do I go along with that? Or do I, you know, give, give, give that the middle finger? But it is, it's, it's that kind of constant sort of going back and forth or, or playing to or against type. Um, so in that sense, uh, in, in on 107, you know, to talk about these sort of processes of interpolation or how we're interpolated, how we're hailed and we're like sort of gestured to like, hey, you. And then we say, huh, who, me? And then, you know, either like, and then what goes from there? I've continuously talked about this. You've heard me talk about this over and over, but the sort of folds of identity, right? And kind of going, like moving past this sort of notion that there's like a real me and a fake me, but as, as opposed to that, just kind of accepting and sort of really sort of kind of um, being okay with the fact that there are numerous me's and they're all me. And, and you know, that's just what it means to be, like be in the world is, is the constantly kind of, um, play to type, play against type, go somewhere in between, go completely, you know, elsewhere. Um, and it also, I would say that that's exactly the sort of, really what I would, would, what I would kind of suggest is one of our main tasks and problems. One version of this, you know, um, um, is like, you know, how do we, how do we relate to one another? How, how do we be with one another in the world? Um, and in that sense, that relationship of like myself, selfhood, and and then the other, and and who who the other is, and sort of you know trying to relate to that. So that's kind of chunk one. Like like there will be like three big chunks today, um, at least for the the talking part. So the first being the viewer viewer expectations and stereotypes, and two, kind of going moving on to business and sort of just to pick up on things that I said for Tuesday's class, but you know again. I am of the mindset, the way that I think about these things, that the answer always comes back to economics and money. And so, um, again, this is very novel to me. It's kind of interesting, um, something I've been curious about. It taps into things that I, you know, I've been interested in, you know, both in in relation to and and not necessarily in relation to my work. Um, but even this, I think, ultimately, it doesn't come down to, you know, us us having a critical discussion. Well, at least so far, like like a like a one person critical discussion about um, a critical discussion about streaming again two cute by half. Um, it, it it's not about you know reaching an audience, talking to the people. Like ultimately, this all comes down to you know the world's smallest violin um, comes down to, to to money. I think that wasn't the proper expression I was looking for. Anyways, so let's move on to the the business of play and and you know already in that title we can kind of sense the sort of thinking about the work leisure relationship that that leisure is always always about work and work is really always about work um okay so on 115 um just pointing out the um, that that taylor talks about the immense amount of labor that goes into all of this um again this is kind of a shitty setup um but i did have to buy well i, I bought this camera um i'm in you know there's nothing fancy you know, um, the production values are, are not great. Um, but I was, you know, the same way that with all of you, like putting up a like a simple presentation on Moodle or, you know, those of you who aren't in my class, but are, are doing any, like going into Zoom, doing any of these things, 
it takes an immense amount of work, especially if you're like, part of it is that like, we do all this kind of thing every day and we don't realize how much work we're putting it in, you know, how much we're putting in because it's so, you know, kind of just routine. But once something like in a very Heideggerian sense sort of breaks and you have to kind of readjust, we realize like, no, this is a lot of work. Like doing all of this was, was an immense amount of work and, and kind of, um, I imagine I'm going to sleep okay tonight because it, it's sort of distressing in a strange way, different from like doing the videos on YouTube, which were also incredibly um, kind of distressing and exhausting. And so that's the one thing is I've constantly been asking this semester, what are the things that we don't think about? What are the things that we constantly avoid? What are the things that are invisible to us? What are the things that we remain blind to? Uh, that question almost always kind of comes back to labor. What is the labor that we don't see? What who are the who who are the laborers that we don't see and and choose not to see? So same with this is that you know um, it's so easy to kind of see the front end, the actual people like you know streaming and oh they're playing games all day you know like they're just sitting there and 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 begging for money for subscriptions. It's like yeah, but again like you know we know that that's not true you guys have seen the the new york times articles about how much how much work it takes to to put this together right similarly um on 115 uh taylor talks about like the immense amount of hats that they have to put on so i mean you know to actually have not necessarily like success you can't you can't we can never guarantee um that's just out of of, of our hands there's just too many kind of contingencies and 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 um and variables but even to just get a, a channel and a stream kind of competently running right um it, it it's not enough that you have to be an online um like an like an on-air person a personality it's like your producer your marketer um you're 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 doing all of these things at the same time so uh you know um to move on to like the, the the actual economics um is it any surprise that i immediately kind of glom on to the point on 116 that you know taylor points out that this is like you know just about everything else that we've talked about what does it come down come to come down to it's ad revenue it's always about ad revenue right it's like the lesson of streaming is ad revenue um that's what this semester comes down to whoa new follower huh so um i mean think about it in in these terms right where it's like even netflix the majority of the semester was netflix netflix is also about ad revenue in the sense of like the absence of ad revenue that they're you know they're making so much money hand over foot not releasing those numbers of course and and part of like the the major um kind of uh the major sort of um selling point is that we don't have to watch ads you know unlike something like hulu but but again and again things like twitch things like youtube um all these platforms comes down to ad revenue and there's the 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 quote on i think i want to say 117 um i won't like actually bring it up but this idea that like this is a house of sand right so this is like incredibly precarious um and sort of you know it it's it's just you know um it's not something concrete right and so for streamers like what their goal is that they want to be become an official partner or an affiliate you know it's like um it, it it's like you have to kind of be selected right um because there are millions of, i'm well i don't know millions at least thousands of people streaming right um it's like you know um twitch isn't going to just like spread the 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 wealth across the board so that regardless of what you're doing you know you you'll get a piece of the of the pie or the cheese cheese um they're you know you 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 have to be selected right and and of course we want to think that this is a meritocracy that it's according to you know um skill or 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 whatever you know but 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 the process is opaque you know that's the thing is that like these processes processes are always opaque like when are they ever transparent transparent when when are decisions ever like made evident to the people that that are being affected you know this is why we choose you know um no it's always just kind of like again to insist on the importance of rhetoric the sort of vague rhetoric of like you know i can say whatever it is blah 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 um but it's through that that you get a share of revenue related to this sort of notion of of um opaque rhetoric on 116 
they talk about how um, Twitch has no figures, right? So they don't release the figures of who's getting what, right? And how they reach that. But what they can say is, quote unquote, industry leading CPM, right? So it's like when you're not releasing the figures and there are no real numbers, but you can, you know, you can say whatever you want and it's true, right? Um, I can say, you know, like, I don't know. I, I, I can say, like, if I don't release, release my, my evaluations, I can say, you know, um, industry leading instructor. It, but it's not true, right? You know, I mean, you and I know that that's not true, but um, it's one of those things, though. It's like, you know, how many times do we kind of go along with something like that or, or choose to be, if not fooled, or at least like to not kind of, you know, press it further, right? To just sort of like let it go is I guess what I would ask, right? Um, um, so um, on through 116 to 117 um, in terms of, of how uh, ad revenue works, um, this is where we talk about like what streamers are actually paid actually how the and how that revenue is actually calculated, um, even though it's kind of all over the place, right? On 118, um, Taylor talks about the financial stability of streamers, which is you know we know is little, right? Um, uh, and 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 viewers' responsibility. I mean, this is like a, a kind of funny thing, like the viewers' responsibility to support them, and it's like I would suggest that there's something there. And, and we're seeing versions of this with, you know, like in terms of like the federal, like our relationship to the government um, and, 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 you know, what's happening with, with people's well-being in the, in the economy, even outside of the fact that there's, you know, just like the immense amount of actual risk to, to you know, your, 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 your life itself. But it's like, how come, how come so often the direction of our ire is sort of moves you know, downward instead of upward in the sense that like, you know, is it, is it the viewer's responsibility? Um, so it's like, should I, like, should I be pointing the finger at you all for not throwing money at me? Or is that the responsibility of the platform itself, especially if it's opaque in its practices? Right. That's the question that I'm, I'm kind of posing. And I think Taylor is posing in the margins. And yet, why is it, you know, it's like, you know, like, it's like, you're the problem, right? You like for, for not supporting me. It's like, I, I don't, I think it, it ties into the, like these kind of ideas, like voting with your dollar and such, but it's like, I, I just don't know if that's really how this stuff works. But I, what I do want to point out, is that there is this kind of what the, what it suggests and what Taylor is is pointing out is this sort of um, uh, the push and pull that happens between producers, the consumers, and then the distributors. Like this would, um, I, I would I would understand this as a distribution platform, right? And you know, like why why am I even doing this on Twitch? You know, and, and at the same time, like talking shit about Twitch on Twitch. The same thing happened YouTube, talking shit about YouTube on YouTube. But why, you know, and, and that's like the, 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 the hegemony working, right? Where it's like when it's the only game in town, right? And um, in order to get whatever it is you're trying to deliver, you have to rely on the, on the infrastructure that's already there in the network, which means like, you know, kind of also taking on all of the baggage that comes with that network. Because it's like, am I going to do it myself? Am I going to start a streaming platform or itself? It's like, you know, no, that's patently absurd. So it like, if you think about it, it goes back to the Amazon reading um, specifically about, um, and those of you who are interested, I can give you the citation, of course. But the Amazon reading in terms of, um, what was it? Where it's like the, the, the worst thing that could happen to small publishers is um, for Amazon to go away. The second worst thing is for Amazon to get more powerful. Like it's you were, how come it's never like you know? It's not the necessary evil or the lesser of two evils. It's it's always that rather than just being like, like two good options or it's always good. No, it's like there's always this garbage, right? On one eighteen, 
and this I think really ties into these ideas of like visibility and also what what we're what we're willing to kind of watch or 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 be attuned to and the stuff that we're not willing to right um is the idea of quote unquote less detectable forms of promotion right that is quote content that is advertising but appears not to be end quote right so it's like um uh no I, um i don't i don't i don't i don't i've never played minecraft um who are you also who are who are you people I can figure out a few of you, but show yourself. Um, but, you know, it's like, we don't like ads, but but ads are, are kind of central to, to the, to, you know, again, the, the endeavor. So it's like, it, it's, it's not dissimilar to like figuring out ways to get your children to eat vegetables, you know, or, or their vitamin or take their, like, you know, get their proper mineral content. So it's like, we can't just have this honest relationship where it's like, here are the ads, you know, um, they matter, take them, you know, um, people hate ads. Right. Um, and so they're always this kind of push and pull going to the point where it's like, now we have content that's trying to, um, uh, like mask itself. Ah, hello, Cole, long time. No see. Um, the book is watch me play. Twitch and the rise of game live streaming. We are. This is chapter three. Home studios, right? Um, so, it's we're we're doing Twitch about Twitch, because um, I'm a clever boy. Um, so this leads to streamers having to seek out right alternate revenue streams, um, because, you know. Um, you can't make a living off this, right? You know. Um, I, although I guess it's it's you know. I don't care enough to like look look do any real research, but it but it is interesting to think about. Interesting to think about um, if streamers are doing better with everyone at home. Um, I think, needless to say, I wouldn't be doing this if 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 it weren't for um, the pandemic either. So um, that includes subscriptions, right? Um, subscribe for 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 five dollars uh, merchandise, but again, you know. Twitch takes a cut of that. Um, and then donations, right? Um, uh, we all know like the, the kind of um, the, uh, the, the, the setup where it's like your, the viewers will, will donate however much. Um, and I think that's part of where we see, because again, this, you know, like Taylor points out this, like streaming is coming from, from games and game culture um, and esports, And you see the kind of like the, the, that sort of, gaming logic to even um, the, the the stream itself. Um, ah, so on 118, and this goes back to, um, if you remember from a few weeks ago, the idea of affective attachment and the way that um, your emotional sort of engagement with something can very easily be capitalized on, right? And exploited, right? On 118, Taylor talks about affective economies, right? And how fandom and connection are interlinked with monetization, right? So it's like the relationship that you have with a streamer, it's really tricky, right? So it, it can be an incredibly meaningful relationship, but it's, but like money is always going to be an issue, be, whether it's in, you know, even in, let's say like a more kind of um, benevolent sense of like trying to support a content producer, but also like in the sort of, you know, sort of uglier side of it, where it's like, if that's the, that person's like, you know, chief form of labor, it's like, yeah, like their, their actual well being. um, uh, um uh, is is tied up into like you know your your kind of emotional attachment to that person and meanwhile you know twitch is always getting its cut right twitch it's like you know if someone has to go hungry it's not going to be the corporation or the platform you know and and again twitch amazon like amazon twitch right um even today when i was on the platform i had to look through and see um i'm just gonna keep doing this um uh, what loot was available for the games that if and, and if any were available for the games that I play um, simultaneously like cold in here and also like warm um, 
we are in Maine, in beautiful Waterville, Maine. It's kind of dreary today, though. So moving on to, to platform and developer dependency. So this is something that I like to tell, like, um, just a lot of people in general. I like to say this. I like to repeat myself, especially as I get older. But this idea that, um, you know, um, in terms of, like, your relationship, especially to, like, an institution, we're, we're tend, we're, we're kind of conditioned to think that the relationship works in a particular way where I need the, the sort of, um, you know, uh, let's say the institution more than the institution needs me. Um, and part of that is because, you know, it's, it's, it's tied again to your, to your wages and your wages are tied to your actual well-being, like your ability to live, like your sustenance. And so it's like, if I don't have my job, and especially for those, those of us who are in the U.S., if I don't have my health insurance, then, you know, quite frankly, you know, excuse my language, it's going to get worse once I start playing video games. Um, I'm fucked, right? And, and so that kind of power differential is what um, kind of allows for so many sort of injustices you know, both like minor and major to kind of, you know, kind of continue. And so um, Taylor talks about this in terms of like, yeah, the the platform and the developer, um, uh, uh, you know, like they depend on, on, the, on, on the streamers and the users themselves, but there's still this kind of um, immense, you know, power differential, right, um, between producer and platform. Meaning, you know, if you think about the agency, or the, the 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 power that streamers have to control things, you know, it's like, it it it's not nearly, you know, and then the thing is, is like the real question is right. It's like without streamers, of course, there is no platform without viewers. But how likely is it that, um, let's say, everyone is going to walk out on Twitch, right? Um, now, if a better alternative comes along. Or, or something that we consider to be a better alternative. That, that's very likely to happen. That happens all the time. But let's say, how likely is it that viewers and streamers um, would kind of, in solidarity, just, you know, walk? Because they were like, we don't like the way you treat us. Um, that is probably unlikely. It can happen. It could happen. And I hope it happens on some level. But, but you know, and that, and that's why, so... You know, um, and, and Taylor points out that this is over like every aspect of the exchange. There's just no no thing that where where the streamer actually has the leverage over the platform, right? Um, in on 124 continued, uh, she talks about how streamers are designated as independent business entities or contractors, which is you know one of those really terrible things, and immediately makes me think of um, World Wrestling Entertainment. I, Peyton, I think you're in here, so you'll know what I'm talking about, Peyton. Um, but but wrestling is the same way, where it's like that's how you kind of eke out the most sort of extract from your workers and not take care of them. It's a sort of horrible, horrible um um thing that they do um so, so it's like we're talking about the designation of labor right so the you know like it's like you work for me but like you're not one of us does that make sense right um and what that means what that comes down to and and they can and you know rhetorically they can kind of make any sort of claim about why that is but it's like it comes down to that there's no set salaries there are no benefits and you get none of the intangibles of being for example like an actual regular worker or employee of Twitch. Um, there's that really kind of terrible thing she talks about on 125 that the streamer has to rely on the platform to accurately report revenue right it's like you know will they do they? I don't know, you know, but it's like, it's just, you know, there is no third party, right? Like, like there's no one intervening. Um, um, I'm going to guess that there's, I'm, I, I'm not saying this with any real factual certainty, but I'm going to guess that there's no streamer union, right? Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, 127, she talks about payola and stage gambling. I don't, nothing really need to hit. Um, but then finally, just to kind of continue that discussion on Moodle about politics and, and legalities and such, um, you know, keeping in mind that uh, on 130 talking about 
multi-channel networks, agents, and lawyers, um, and the kind of like lawlessness and 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 you know wild west that streaming is. So we have a question. Um, That's a good question. Um, I, you know, off the top of my head, I can't, I want to say yes, but I can't really say with any real certainty as to, as to why um, worker unions don't, um, I mean, I have guesses off the top of my head, but there are other people. And if anyone else in the, in the chat can, can feel this better as to why, like, you know, unions are historically just on the, on the downturn. But at the very least, I think like I guess what I can say is that I think if there were a streamer union that um, that that the workers would have, you know, at least some de some amount of of, of bargaining power um, is the sense that, that I would get. Um, but I and, and I don't know. I mean, I think it's it's terribly it's it's totally likely that that could happen, you know, in the future because this is still so early and new, right? And and hopefully it will. Um, I, I, there's got to be someone that's trying to organize is, is would be my guess. Um, I'm not going to Google it right now, but okay. Finally, um, from 133 to 135, the section on passionate, I can touch my face because I haven't gone anywhere because I'm observing stay at home orders, passionate and precarious labor. On the other end, I mean, you, you've uh, already gotten this, but okay. Another question. Um, I think that's a question between you and your God. Um, uh, but to, you know, to answer that, I, I, I haven't actually turned on any of the moderation tools, um, precisely because I guess, you know, um, I don't know, I, but, but I haven't, you know, and, and knowing that that's a possibility and I guess like leaving that possibility open in order to, you know, that if, if that were to happen to kind of point out like, you know, that this is something that happens, um, which goes back to like the first section, right? Um, but I, I guess the, the real answer is like, if that's not who you are and you don't want to do that and you just want to kind of perform that, like probably not, probably not a good idea. Um, okay. So all of this, in some sense, right, is is about labor. Um, and in the one thirty four, not just with 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 streaming, but in general, you know, um, especially after Reagan and Thatcher in the last I don't know forty years, um, risk navigation in contemporary workspaces, but the amount of risk. Right, um, a risk that all of us are feeling to very, very different degrees um, uh, with the pandemic, um, especially in terms of lack of job security and an increase in employment flexibility, meaning that um, it's no longer viable for you to be able to just do one or two things, but you have to be able to kind of um, adapt yourself to whatever role is asked of you, right, in the workplace, um, you know, because things are so sort of like contingent. Um, and all over the place, right? But the and and the, go back to the, like being independent contractors. Um, th this real problem where it's like if you're an independent contractor, the idea is that you 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 are um, free to go over wherever your labor takes you. But when it's like when when your only platform is is between like whether you whether you're tw you're on Twitch or whether you're on um, YouTube. That's why it was such a big deal when Ninja uh, went off Twitch, right? And to that, to that other platform. But there's this like kind of um, disconnect where you are an independent contractor that's deeply tied to a platform, platform that is not of your own making. So it's like you have an investment in something that you have no, no real stake in. Like you have no like um, stock in it. You didn't produce it. And this is kind of, you know, ultimately when I kept kind of talking about affective attachment, this is one of the things that I've been trying to insist on all semester is to be just like, like aware of your, your emotional attachments, right? It's like, why, why, why do I feel so emotionally connected? Let's say to something like Moodle, like I'm not, but if I were or Blackboard, 
you know, or Brightspace. Like why? And and like, what does that mean? It means that I put in like work, a lot of work. Um, and it's work that I'm, I'm not being compensated for, to be honest, and that someone else is benefiting from. And so they point out this like double bind where the, the, the success of the streamer is dependent on the platform. And so they are dependent practically and even emotionally to the platform. And so finally, just to kind of one last um, thing to top off this section on 135, um, if I can find the quote quick enough. There's a block quote about gig work, um, like the gig economy, right? Flexible labor. This is the, uh, the middle, this is BAME. Gig work is inherently unstable and questions about where money will come from now and in the future cause anxiety. The threat of poverty is ever present. And so, you know, it's just something to keep in mind, especially, you know, like that's like idea, like the, like neoliberal ideology par excellence is the idea that like, if you, if you love what you work, you'll never work um, a day in your life. A lot of kind of horrible things can, um, horrible practices can kind of be perpetuated precisely under the auspices of, of, of a, of a terrible ideology like that. And so, you know, playing video games for a living sounds great. Um, but that doesn't mean that, you know, there isn't a constant kind of dread of the fact that, you know, how long will I be able to do this? Um, and that extends outward as well. Okay. So that's, that's the, the chapter. Um, so that was the final lecture um, for at least my portion. We'll move on to, to presentations next week. Um, any last questions before I, I play some games? No? All right, well, I'm gonna have some tea and then let's play some Overwatch. Um, so now I have to resort to my other screen, um, if you say anything. Uh, this is PC, so I'm playing with PC. I'm, this is not my, this is my secondary account. I generally play, um, on PlayStation. Um, I'm not nearly as high as I, as I, as I would like to be. Um, no, um. This is the first time I've ever streamed, and so I basically just bought the 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 um, the, uh, the camera and then started from there. I think it's something to think about in terms of like why do people stream from their bedrooms? I mean, if I if I were to take this seriously, I mean I'm taking it seriously now, but if I were to do this in any kind of like sustained capacity, I would definitely think about like. Um, you know what would be around me what what the what the sort of um ambiance would be um and of course you know like that would also be me performing a particular type of like you know streamer right um i mean even playing games right now right like part of it is that like to demonstrate to whomever is watching is that you know i'm not just one of these you know academics that does this it's like i'm also a member like i actually do play video games um fairly competently right it's like on my desk like you know i have diva like it's me and diva she's i'm a diva main so you know um i also have scare scare glow but um so kind of not i'm not warmed up we'll see where it goes i generally play mystery heroes um because there are two big reasons. One, um, you can practice every character in the game. And two, um, uh, you don't have to get frustrated with the fact that people are, are making poor choices. Um, who are you? Oh, first I have to mute chat because um, my temper really comes out when I play video games and it's really easy to get me really pissed off. Weapon system optimized. 
I'll be busy soon enough. Um, I hate playing on my secondary account because I don't have all my skins and my sprays. I feel naked. sensing my mouth starting to go kind of ajar, which is, I've been doing that ever since I was a child, drives my mother crazy. For some reason I feel much more like I'm playing alone than when I was talking to them. It's kind of interesting. I also really hate losing. I also wish the moment would take care of the tracer. anyone has. It's okay though, because they're pretty good. Gotta protect the mercy! Maybe? Maybe? Yeah. Again? Ah! Big rock. Yeah. 
the Nyata has two T's. One shot, more on one my kill. Side. Shots dead. What? Together. You wait till you get strong. to my age. Let's see how well you on. aim. Mm. 
How about that aim? Is gay. Shouldn't vote for yourself, but <laughs> are you gonna say it was all because of you? Do another. <laughs> that was pretty lucky. Traveling to Horizon Luna Hey, John. The reckoning it is refrigerator. I don't think I have that voice in GG. GG. I'm back in black. I don't have Reaper's uh, pixel spray either on PC nor on PS4. Um, it kind of drives me nuts. So the achievement where you have to kill. Like three people with one clip without reloading with me. Although, I guess it wouldn't be a clip. Because they're shotguns. You know, actually. This makes me nervous. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's a little bit of both, is gay. What are you trying to say? Also, this is a game about team play. It doesn't matter how good you are if everyone else isn't good. So I can just blame everyone else if we lose. That's exactly how this works. Space. Zero gravity. Oh, get out of here. Ah! Uh, 
Clearly, I'm carrying it's them. It's a perfect day for some mayhem. <laughs> My ultimate priority. Oh. I got the objective. I got the key. Wolf. Come on. Stop. I'm going to get to him. Zenyatta is here. I don't know. Play of the game. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I think what Overwatch has really been able to capitalize on is not just the sort of um, inherent sociality of, of playing with other people, but really, um, I think, exploiting the kind of current like the last few years, especially in terms of, you know, people sort of and kind of solidifying their senses of selfhood um, on the internet. Um, and especially, you know, after something like Gamergate, um, race, I think, to a much lesser degree, but, but still there, just a kind of broader discussion about kind of subjectivity and identity and identity politics and so um i mean i've made this point quite a bit but just looking at the sort of avail available characters um you know it's not a coincidence that that i that, I, that i'm a diva main um it's one of the like video games is one of the very few places where i actually kind of have some semblance of of nationalism you know to, to my own frustration but it's like it's like they produce this character precisely you know, as if they knew what would get um, a reaction from someone like me, a pro, you know, former pro gamer, um, StarCraft player who's Korean, um, and a mech driver that's like very clear allusions to um, Evangelion, especially, um, which is a text that's kind of important to me. And so those sort of subtle ways of, you know, and like, it's like, again, like playing the healer Mercy. It's not a coincidence that she looks the way that she does, or, you know, the kind of you know soldier looks the way, like mo most sort of base default character looks the way that he does, um, but they're they're certainly playing into these kind of subtle ways that um, you know we can kind of perform online, I suppose. Uh, I'll play like one competitive and then maybe move on. Maybe play some, maybe play some PUBG. Thanks, this game. Appreciate it. Time is. Oh, I wonder how long this will take. I also don't like doing like any of these new like the I don't like playing death matches, period, really. Um, I think I'm really bad at them. I don't like skirmishes or practice range because it's like it's not for real. Also my hand hurts. Hands hurt.
uh, the it's a Gundam reference. Traveling to Nepal. I'll tell you in a second. Prepare for battle. Um, even though I'm a diva main, when I play, I, when I play and I try and win, I usually try and do an anchor tank like Reinhardt, um, who, who I've had a lot of fun with lately, um, or uh, Sigma, who's a lot of fun too. I'm definitely better at tank than the other. I'm not your father. He's not my father. I'm not your father. Excuse me. Five, four, three, two, one. Round one. Capture the objective. <clears throat> Go for it. Nope. nope. Squished. you guys. Resistance. 
Chinese restaurant tea, which I think is like a combination of jasmine and oolong? I could be wrong. Um, I'm not really picky. I just try and drink because it's think you can you know, keep up with me? better for you, I guess. There is no obligation for the universe to make sense to you. Noticed with the soldiers, the highest rank or leveled on our team keeps feeding. Bigger. Bigger. Is everyone? See again. Meteor strike. Assemble at this location. Oh, this is going great. Fire at will! It's playing! 
Yo, I did my job. Um, the Red Comet is a reference to Mobile Suit Gundam, or Gundam. Um, and one of the characters... Uh, Shar Aznabul, whose nickname is the Red Comet. So most of my online handles go by that. Except for the like this channel and the YouTube channel. Tiny man. I'm working on an article on PUBG right now. And so I would really like a screen capture of a solo chicken dinner. I've been trying to make it work. Well, I just started last night in earnest, but um, I don't know. Who knows? Although my friends and I have also been trying to get chicken dinner for a while now, and that's also not really working out. Yeah. Small room. Better chances. <laughs> not really, though. Let's get it to it, man. There's gonna be trouble wherever I go. Definitely going to the same town. Ah. Uh. Two. Lucky. Ah, it's really close.
Also, I'm much worse at this game. Oh shit, there's someone already here. Which you'll probably be about to see. And there's a dead body already. <laughs> See? <laughs> oh, Jesus. That was quick, at least. Bad. Nope. I feel that uh, PUBG, I've already logged over 100 hours, um, but I feel uh, because of the way the game is, is, is structured, um, it makes me feel like that scene in Elf when he's opening the Jack in the Box. Ah! Ah! Like I never get used to it. I guess it's like racism in that sense. You just never get used to it. It surprises you every time. Same map? Well, yes, of course. I mean, did you see? Did you see that round? It was terrible. Look at all these fancy skins. Look at this lion person. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. But it gets me more than most movies do. Maybe I should have just stuck to Overwatch. Throw a pig squint a quarter of a mile. Um, probably like the best way for me to get better at this game would be to actually get like log in more combat. But I also kind of want to win. So I play really conservatively. And thus I end up losing a lot because I don't get better at combat. Also, like people who've played the game will know, like the the, the gun controls are kind of janky. It's not the most tightest game you can play. Uh, bunch of people over there. I think I'm a. Oh, a bunch of people over there. A little bit outside of the zone. <laughs> Will I regret not taking that shotgun? Maybe. faked out. Is this not a real building? Oh, that's brilliant.
I'm only 47, 46 alive. Wait, someone was here. Of course there was. Maps the Sally's in my backyard. Ah oh, shit, that's very close. He's right in there, isn't he? God damn it! That map. I mean, not that I'm much better on any other map, but. <laughs> okay, this is more like it. I think we've won twice in Warzone on PS4. I haven't won um, Plunder Cash yet. Cash. Um, the last time I won in PUBG was a year ago. Um, but that was on mobile too, which I noticed is, is definitely easier than this. Um, everyone's confused by what they're wearing. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. This definitely feels sometimes like even more than Call of Duty that, that, um, the skill level is just entirely different. I don't get it entirely, but try my hardest y'all. You were going to put negative comments on my evaluation anyway. What time is it where, where you're at home? I hope it's not some like you're you logged on at some ridiculous time just for this. Just to watch me get killed and scared. Scarred. Oh, that's not that bad. And yes, a man who has known horrible evaluations knows no fear. 
Well, someone's going to ruins too, which means... I mean, fuck. That's not good. Ah, I hate this. Someone's already in here and they'll lose my mind. Excuse me. Garbage for guns. Boom boom zone. I guess Papa has to hole up for a little bit. Oh, this is a terrible spot. I have no idea what that sound was. It sure is freaking me out though.
I bow to the pressure of having an audience. I probably didn't want to just sit there. Then I can blame you when I die up in these buildings. You specifically, this game. The perfect place for an ambush. Oh, just saw that. Do you guys see that? Of course, there's nothing in here. Doesn't sound like they're stopping. Wolf.
trying to get in as far as possible to anticipate the zone as opposed to having to move, like having to move. Like choosing move, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. Of course, it could be danger in any of these buildings. Which won't be fun. Especially since we're so close to Pachinki. We're, because we're in it together. Hey, open doors. More open doors. I see. 